In a way, I was uh, very lucky to win the Indy 500 because uh, that's all everyone remembers me for. <laughs> you know, I, I won the Indy Car Championship and a lot of other things, but uh, the Indy 500 is what uh, what people refer me to. So it is a very important race uh, and a uh, great race to win. The first 150 laps, you make sure you're at, on the same lap of the leader. The last 50 is when the race is uh, actually uh, won or lost. So up until that point, it was just to be in contention. And uh, we were actually really good, and we did our last pit stop. And Robbie Gordon, as it turned out, they didn't do that last pit stop, and so he took the lead. We were talking about it and thinking, no way he can go to the end. But then, uh, you know, 10 laps to go, I started thinking, hmm, maybe he can go to the end, you know. So we really went after and we cut seconds and really closed that gap. And it was just about a lap and a half to go. And I think, Christ, he might actually go to the end, you know. And by that time, we were right behind him. And then he pulled into the pits because he couldn't. And uh, that was it, you know, the, the race was won. And it was a great, uh, great day. It was a temporary setback, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't really remember much about the crash. Uh, in fact, for the whole weekend uh, and things probably further back in time. I remember us drivers, Scott Dix and Tony Canaan and myself and Dario Franchitti and, and people, we, we were greeting some fans before the race. And I remember a pit stop during the race that didn't really go according to plan. But that's it. Uh, everything else is, is black. I, I don't think I suffered much, but it was a big hit. It was the highest uh, recorded G-force ever. The recorder in the car measured two, 214 Gs. And uh, in the car, also, they also have um, G sensors in the earplugs. Those uh, sensors showed 196 Gs, and then they broke. So I don't know what kind of violence the head actually saw, but that's the way they uh, keep track of, um, you know, what, what G force you're actually exposed to. Uh, so it was it was a lot of force involved in that crash, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I survived it, uh, and I had a lot of injuries. Obviously, you know, uh, spent three months in, 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 in hospital and um, I came out of hospital, I, you know, I lost uh, 25 kilos of weight, it was skin and bones. The comeback happened in a slightly weird way because when I had my accident uh, I was replaced by Buddy Rice, then he had an accident uh, in practice leading up to the Indy 500. And Bobby Rahal called me and said can I substitute for Buddy, so I replaced my replacement. <laughs> We went out to qualify and it was the first time that I felt that I actually won the race before the race has actually started. But the comeback, the performance in qualifying, uh, setting the fastest time in the field, it was a goal of mine. But to actually do it, that's hard to do, especially after being uh, out of a car for 18 months and nearly, you know, with all the injuries that I had to work my way back from. It was, uh, yeah, it felt tremendously satisfying. Uh, and it was, uh, it was good that it turned out that way because then in the race, a little knot uh, to one of the steering arms uh, undid itself. The wheels went out of alignment and we had to retire. I was convinced after I stopped my IndyCar uh, career not to, to really race again. And I started running a young driver development program and I had a, a very eccentric man uh, to sponsor it from Sweden. And, he kept trying to convince me year after year that we should go to the X Games and, and run one of his cars because he also built rally cross cars. And I was trying to say to him, you know, I'm retired and, you know, the, the new drivers now that we're sponsoring is going to drive. And, but in the end of the day, he convinced me. I managed to sort of say to him, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm driving if you're, kind of come, if you're going to come with me. So in the end, he agreed to do it, so we ended up in, in Los Angeles and we ended up winning the X Games. And so I thought to myself, um, you know, maybe I shouldn't retire completely, maybe I should do selected events. So from that point, I've done one, two, maybe three events a year. I was invited to drive the F1 GTR long tail. That was actually the development car for uh, back in the day that McLaren used. So we set out to do the Goodwood uh, Festival of Speed, which I've been up that hill, uh, you know, before, um, but never at speed, really. Uh, so we did some testing beforehand, 
uh, not nearly enough, but still, uh, you know, to just soften it up a bit because we knew the hill was going to be, be bumpy and stuff. And then we went to, uh, uh, to, to do this hill climb and it was, uh, it was a fantastic car to drive, you know, the, the sound of the V12 engine. And in the end of the day, we finished third, which was a great result considering that this car was built in 1996 and we had uh, much, much newer competition in front of us. Uh, so we were really happy with it. It was a fantastic event. It started when I uh, had a discussion with Mike Fluitt, the head of McLaren uh, cars, you know, uh, and uh, we talked about developing cars, how to do it and what's important and all those things. Some time went by and then he uh, invited me to do a, a drive event with them. And so I, I went, on, went along and did that and it was a lot of fun driving the cars. and. We talked about the good points and maybe things to potentially develop and, and then it sort of rolled on from there and uh, I've uh, you know, been involved now a little bit in developments and refinements of stuff. Um, you know, uh, all through my racing career I've been very interested in the technical aspect of cars uh, because that's a necessity to actually win. I'm not an engineer uh, but I do understand what they uh, do and I can have an educated discussion with an engineer uh, for the purpose of developing the car better. And so that's what I will be trying to do with McLaren as well, you know, just to be a little glue between different things to develop. Uh, like my old race engineer used to say, you need a little bit of grey hair, and so I'm going to try to add a little bit of grey hair into it.